Hi all, Hal here with more Space Engineers, and today we're doing something a little bit different. And uh, right now, as you can probably see going on in front of us, you probably have an idea of what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> oh, but first, we have to get started, so let's go. So happy Thursday, everybody. Hopefully you're having a fantastic week and a terrific day, uh, depending on what time of the day you are in. <laughs> Either it's the end of a great day or the beginnings of a <laughs> fabulous one. All right, so um, for those who have been watching the comment section as well as some of the, uh, the back and forth I've been having with a few people, they've been asking about how to set up uh, basically like a, a 3D printer or replicator system. So one of the first things you'll hear me say is that if you're not using Bob, you definitely want to be using something like, say, the tiered ship tools or one of the uh, the modded ship tool systems or, uh, you know, for the large grid uh, grinders and welders because the vanilla grinders and welders have a very small radius that they can work within. Now, I am not using any of the modded stuff. Um, this, this is a completely vanilla build. And what we've done is we've set it up to be a multi-pass system. So what you'll do is you will have your whatever system you, you want to set up. And as you can see, I've got some things over here already started from where I was testing it. Um, so I have a blueprint set up. Right? So when you're setting a system like this up, one of the first things I will recommend is turning on the debug options that will allow you to see just where how far out uh, things like the welders and the grinders will allow you to uh, be able to work with them. Now, I'd, I'm not going to go into how you turn on those debug options. There's plenty of tutorials out there. If you're really curious, let me know and I'll post a link down in the description um, or even on the comments section. But for the, everybody else, <laughs> once you know where the, the area of influence of these things or area of effect are for the, uh, the different tools, you can build around those limitations. So you figure out what your spacings are. And you, if you have a, like a specific style of ship that you want to be mass producing, um, you'll see this a lot in some of the... Uh, the multiplayer servers where they'll have small scouts or attack craft that people will be uh, that are really cheap to build very quick to build and they'll have a system set up to actually mass produce these things so basically that's what we have here and I mean this is a ridiculously simple system to, to build so I wanted to walk you through it show you what I've got going on and then show you a couple of different ways to address some of the things that are happening here now, if you are using something like Bob, you don't need nearly as many components out here. Um, you can get away with a minimum of one, but I would say probably not more than four. Um, anything more than that, your sim speed's gonna go to crap and you're, you're, it's really overkill. I mean, if you really want to do it, you can. I've seen a couple of builds that had six, seven, eight. Uh, I think Wasted Space had one with 12 on it. And one of the guys that he associates with, um, I think they said they had something like 64 of them or something. Maybe it was 24. It was basically a wall of Bob. So you can do it if you want and you've got the system to run it. Just, just remember the mods like that will uh, hit your system performance really, really heavily when you start stacking them up like that. Okay, so what we have done is we have a system that as you can see we've got a couple of pistons joined and then what you'll do is you will hook up your uh, landing gear a reactor a holographic projector and then a, a little bit of a spur for everything to build off of now what i did is go into creative mode build what you what you're trying to plan um, and then make a blueprint. This is a blueprint system. The idea is that you are going to be repeatedly building the same blueprint, right? So if you're doing something freeform, then you just 
basically cut out this middle section and build it normally. And then uh, you just reverse these things, turn on the welders, and it'll weld it up for you, right? So one of the things that you have to remember is that for things to be valid, it ha uh, for as a welding target, it has to be in contact with something that fully exists in the world. So when I build these types of replication systems, what I will do is I'll build a spur that is the, the basis of the system. And then, um, like I said, I'll go into creative mode, I'll build whatever I'm trying to build. And then when I come back into survival, you come over here, Storm inbound. you come over here to your system, you go into your control panel, you grab your projector. And as you can see, I've already got a blueprint selected, which gives me the option to remove it. But you would normally just come in here, select your blueprint. Um, so, you know, we're going to keep the one we have here. But you just double click on it. And it'll apply it. Now, if you need to adjust it, what you do is you just go back into your projector control panel. Uh, I think everybody knows how to do this, but for those who don't, you basically have offsets and each offset value of a full decimal moves it one grid one one grid block of the equivalent grid size so if you're using a small grid it will move you it will move the projection one small armor block in the direction that you choose negative numbers move it further away um, from center positive move numbers move it closer to center until you hit zero and then once you go past zero, then it starts moving it past center. So you just play around with these and you'll figure out where you need to go vertical offset. If you need to rotate, flip it, you can actually do all of that with the pitch all and roll. Um, so just be aware of that. It is actually a, uh, a nice system. Works really, really well. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to match up the blueprint that you built that is based on the same schematic with the schematic. Um, it's the same basis that you do for auto repairing systems. Let me show you here. The blueprint that we have, we'll move this out on a vertical offset of, I don't know, like, yeah. Let's see. Okay, so as you can see, I've got it set up a little bit differently. Let me show you what I've got going on here. So we're going to go into projector. We actually want to deselect the build only show buildable. Uh, the reason I do that is so that I can see what the next piece is and I don't get lost in the build as I'm working on it. But as you can see here, if you start playing with these, it'll move it around a little bit. Uh, for this particular one, a positive three for the vertical offset aligns it. If you go, say, so by default, our schematic is like that. So if I turned on the welders right now and ran it through this process, it would try and weld up everything that you see that's holographic anywhere that the blocks weren't colliding. Um, so you do want to be aware of that when you're building it. So you want to get this squared up. You want to get it in all, everything lined up the way it needs to be lined up. We already know that this is an offset of three to get us where we want. And if you have the show buildable turned off or only show buildable turned off, it'll show you the entire blueprint, right? Now, when you're doing these types of automation systems, it doesn't matter too much because, you know, the automation's going to do it for you. But if you're doing it by hand, I normally re will recommend to say show only buildable because that's the way, like I said, you'll be able to see what's next in there for the uh, the manufacturing piece. Yep. Now, remember what I said about the, the distance. With vanilla, uh, specifically with the vanilla welders, you see how close we are here? Uh, when this retracts fully, basically that welder is going to scrape across the top of these blocks. That's how close it has to be. It's ridiculously tight when you're doing this. Uh, so you do be aware of that. That is one of the re reasons why I do recommend using something like the, um, was it the tiered ship tools? Um, there used to be a couple of um, like the twin tools, 
package, which had twin drills, twin welders, twin grinders. Uh, what that would do is it gave you a much larger area of effect for the, the, the different tools, so you could have one tool be able to reach a little bit further. And there are other mods out there as well where you can have, there is like a shipyard mod that is a custom build. Uh, works really well if you have the patience of setting it up. It's just, it's really tedious to set up. Um, which is, I've used it in the past. It, it works, like I said, it works really well. Alright, so, let's uh, stop jabbering and we are going to get this thing going. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and already set up groups so we have all of these things mapped out we have the pit the button to extend the pistons number two is the button to retract the pistons number three is the welders no nope, grinders and number four is the welders right so i have it set for the the speed of the piston set to 0.1 so when we retract it you're going to notice it goes really really slow we're going to turn the, the welder on and as it gets closer, if you're using modded systems, at this point it would already be welding up. Uh, because of the distance that we need to get for these things, we're going to have to wait just a little bit, but that's fine. And then the, the system works for grinding as well, and as you see I've interlaced uh, grinders in here. Now if you're doing something with a little bit tighter area, then you want to try and keep everything a little bit more condensed just put grinders directly next to your welders um, I generally say to have them offset like this where you have one above one below because it allows you to have a little bit better control over what's actively trying to kill you All right. so as you can see as it comes through it starts welding up and it will take the first block that is within its range that is valid for welding. So as it goes, you're going to see it start doing more welding. And as it continues to move forward, what you're going to end up with is this thing has now gotten wide enough that the welders on the side can start impacting it as well. Now this is a really small build. It's not meant to be anything overly complex, but it does give us a full ship. So we're going to go ahead. Everything's welded up. We're going to turn the welders off. Make sure the welders are turned off. If you haven't noticed it, there's a red light around the welder emitter. If you get in front of this thing when that red light is turned on, it will kill you. So be aware of that. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. We want to get you out of there. We're gonna put the gear in, have it set to switch lock. And let's go ahead and back this thing out. And we have a fully functional ship. So the nice thing about doing it like this is that, you know, you can mass produce ships and you saw how fast it is. As long as you have the materials in the inventory system that's feeding the grinders and welders, the ship welds ridiculously quickly. And you, I mean, you saw how easy that was, right? So if I wanted to do something where I was mass producing these, what I would do is, let's, uh, yeah. yeah okay well it works so let's go ahead and lock that back on there what I would normally do is I would then go oh, let's do this we want to go ahead and get this stuff off our inventory we're gonna grab our tools really quickly and like I said earlier I am in creative mode while I'm doing this just to demonstrate what we have going on and how to do this stuff Let's go ahead and take this stuff out. There you go. Because now we can back this thing out. And we have a ship, right? Alright, so um, I think I put enough materials in there to do another one of these. So now that we have that, we take this whole thing. We're going to turn our welders back on, and we're going to have it extend the, uh, the system out. Now I don't remember if I actually have this set up so that it will weld this properly, so do keep that in mind. We'll find out here in a second. 
I'm too used to using the uh, the modded tools, so yeah, it should be it should be just close enough. All right. Yep, there it goes. But you see how fast that welds up. Now it will weld a little bit slower in ooh, in a real game when you're in survival mode. This is just for illustration purposes, but I've had, like I said, I've had people asking how you do this type of thing and how you get it to work, because they've been I've been told everything from it won't work when it's on pistons to it doesn't like it because it's different grid size or shape or whatever. It's like yeah, it's it will work. You just have to know how the system is set up, and then we have a second chip. And then just to show you what happens when you get too close to the welder that is turned on. Did they fix it? You notice you're taking a little bit of damage here. Because I am in creative mode, I'm not taking damage. Normally, that would kill you within the first shot or so. So, And the, uh, the grinders do the same thing, so do keep that in mind. Which is why we have everything set up on a control panel. So we can fix it, stick it, and go, right? Now for this one, we only really need to remove that block. And now we have two of these. I don't think I put enough materials in there to do a third one of these things, so... But now, you know, there you go. Two exact ships. Not bad, right? And that's basically how it works. I mean, you can change up what's on the piston. You can actually put the welders on the piston. In fact, let's... Uh, can we grind that down? I wonder if you're close enough to grind that down. Uh, I might grind the piston. <laughs> Let's try it, see what happens. Uh, this, this could go horribly wrong. I'm not sure which way this is going to go. This will be interesting. All right. So, yeah, it's just a little too far up for it, which is fine. Um, you may notice when people do these types of things, you'll see people have this area set up, like well, how we have it set up right now. Um, what, we'll ha what they may have it do is have a grinder built into the system so that it actually will grind out the spar. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can do with these types of systems if you're willing to take the time and energy to set them up. So, uh, yeah, but that's the uh, that's a very, very rudimentary 3D printer. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. I am going to get out of here. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe. And if you want to keep be kept up to date with new things going on, make sure you ring the bell. And, uh, yeah, because that, that'll let me know that you're enjoying it. I don't know if I'm going to do more of these these styles of tutorials. Uh, normally, I'll script them out a little bit more, but because we didn't do the up the video for Wednesday, <laughs> I'm trying to get uh, trying to get my schedule back on track. So I figured I'd do this as a nice little filler. Also helped serve uh, helped it served to help folks in the community that had been asking specific about these types of builds, and hopefully you found it useful. So. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I want to thank you all for stopping in. If you did enjoy it, like I said, make sure you smack that like button. Uh, we will see you back here next time for more Space Engineers. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. And yes, Friday's episode will be the normal stuff. <laughs> we'll be back on the asteroid base. Take care, everybody.